It really doesn't get much simpler than this. Hello everyone, a little while ago we made a pair of bag bellows out of concrete sacks, pipe, sticks, and duct tape. Today we're going to test that set of bag bellows out. First I want to tell you about this forge we'll be using. It's called a trench forge because obviously it's in the shape of a trench. We're using it because it's dirt simple just like the bag bellows we made. In fact it literally is dirt simple, it's just made out of grass and mud with a high clay concentration. It's literally just two pieces of mud mixed with grass. The benefit of using a simple forge like this, besides that it's kind of cool, is that it's absurdly easy to make. This is the kind of thing a three-year-old could do in your backyard when there's a big rainstorm. Although it's simple, it's good technology. Because they're so easy to make, you can make different sizes and shapes for different projects. It's really handy to have a long, thin trench forge instead of a small forge for some projects, like for instance, swords. In fact, trench forges were commonly used in Japanese sword making. Today, though, we're just going to test the ability of the bag bellows to supply oxygen to a fire. Fires require oxygen to burn. In fact, fire itself is an oxidizing chemical reaction. If you supply more oxygen to the fire, the chemical reaction can occur faster and produce more heat, bringing your steel to a higher temperature. You can see here that we formed a hole in the base of one of the trench walls. This is the tuyer, the opening that permits airflow into the heart of the fire. It's also where, because of the increased oxygen coming from the bellows, the fire will be hottest. Also, as you can see, we're using charcoal from one of our previous charcoal burnings as fuel. So the fuel, forge, and bellows have all been made by us. As we start to pump the bellows, you can see that the flames reach higher. That's because of the increased oxygen, and it's exactly what we want to see. The heart of the fire will burn hotter because of the bellows. You can also see how important it is to have as constant an airflow as possible. Varying amounts of oxygen make it hard to keep the fire temperature consistent. Too cold and you sit around waiting for your steel to heat up. Too hot and you literally burn your steel up. In a modern forge, you get around this problem with an electric fan, which provides a constant airflow and never gets tired. In our case, we get around it by making two back bellows and pumping them alternately with each hand in rhythm. Blacksmith's apprentices would be assigned to pump the bellows at a steady pace to keep the fire temperature consistent. You can bet that after a few years of pumping the bellows, they'd have some pretty impressive muscles before they ever picked up a hammer and put it to hot steel. During that time, they'd be watching the master blacksmith and learning from his example how to work with iron. We've got a railroad spike in the fire now with the tip down near the tuyere. We're going to pull it out soon and see if it got hot enough to forge. A quick Google search tells me that charcoal burns by itself at about 1400 to 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. Ideally, we'd like our steel much hotter at somewhere between 1800 and 2200 degrees, or when the steel turns bright orange to yellow. It looks like we've got the railroad spike up into the orange heat range. We're going to put it back into the fire and see if we can get it any hotter, but we already know that the bag bellows works. One of the things Joseph and I think about a lot is appropriate technology. Basically, it's the idea that higher tech isn't always better tech. A chainsaw is definitely more technologically complex than a handsaw, but if you are lost in the woods, the chainsaw is going to run out of gas, so the handsaw is actually better technology. In this case, a mud forge and bag bellows are about as good for the job as an expensive propane forge, they're far cheaper and easier to make, and you get your arm day exercises in. Basically, in every situation there is an appropriate level of technology. Too little technology can't get the job done, and too much is actually inefficient. High-tech solutions are often the right answer to human problems, but then again, sometimes they may be wasteful and actually counterproductive. Finding the right level of technology in any given situation is an incredibly important question, and we happen to be exploring the answer using bag bellows and trench forges. Thanks for watching our video. If you make your own forge or bellows, we want to hear about it in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, check out some of our other videos and use the appropriate technology of your computer mouse or touchscreen to click the like and subscribe buttons.